In Southern Africa, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa says the panel tasked with looking into the circumstances surrounding the Lady Arts docking in Simonstown in December had found no proof to back up the claims that weapons had been placed onto the ship bound for Russia. The President was speaking about the results of the 15th BRICS summit and the conclusions of the independent panel tasked with looking into claims that a Russian cargo ship Lady R which the U.S. had sanctioned, had loaded weapons for Russia at the Simonstown Naval Base. The president's father said the panel's report won't be released to the public. From its investigation, the panel found no evidence that any cargo of weapons was loaded for export onto the ship Lady R. The panel, the panel found that there was no evidence to support the claim that the ship transported weapons from South Africa destined for Russia. The panel established that the ship docked at Simonstown to deliver equipment that had been ordered for the South African National Defense Force in 2018 by AMSCO, our country's arms procurement company. In terms of the contract for the supply of the arms, neither AMSCO nor the South African National Defense Force had any control whatsoever over the means through which the supplier of the ordered equipment would transport them to South Africa. In its report, the panel outlined the circumstances that led to the docking of the ship in Simonstown as well as the type of goods supplied and the reasons why the goods were unloaded at the time. To discuss this, uh, we are joined by a member of Parliament, Democratic Alliance, Caboose Marais. Thank you so much, Caboose, for talking to us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to your viewers. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the news. Now, what is your reaction to the Lady R report, the investigation, and um, the actual uh, report that was presented? And also, I'd like to also find out who actually inaugurated the panel, because there have been questions around the possibility of the um, results being skewed, depending on the panel being instituted, to actually look at the issue of the allegation coming from the West. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, yes, I mean, uh, I had a bit of an expectation about last night, uh, although, you know, it is it is not strange what we have heard. Um, I can just say from our side and from the Democratic Alliance side is uh, that uh, we are disappointed because uh, we know that the intelligence that we have relied on is impeccable and it has been proven to be absolutely correct. Um, the president has claimed a number of things that um, I don't know where he got the information from. And I can just point to a few. The one is that we have never claimed that the weapons was loaded. In fact, I've made it clear since December that whenever I was asked about that, I said there was no weapons loaded. That doesn't mean that there was not other stuff loaded that can be used, for instance, in the manufacturing of weapons. So uh, there's most probably components that have been loaded. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I've got no doubt because on the morning before the Lady R left Simonstown, three o'clock that, that morning, that was after the, the, the ammunition that was offloaded, uh, already departed for the uh, northern province of Limpopo, uh, where, where it was delivered on that Friday evening. So, so uh, on that three o'clock in that morning, there was still an activity of stuff being loaded onto the VR with cranes under spotlights. So, uh, so, so what was loaded? We know it was not apples and pears, uh, and it seems like the the brief and scope of the panel was only to look at whether weapons was loaded. Now that is very narrowly. Um, uh, limited and, and and that doesn't help us. The other thing that the president has has not alluded to is the circumstances why the lady R went to Simonstown 
for the offloading of what he refers to as equipment, but it was actually ammunition, uh, and it was permits was issued in 2019 and 2020, as it was reported to the Joint Standing Committee on Defence of Parliament. So no, no equipment as he has referred to, and not in 2018. Um, then also, um, any ammunition and arms or any military equipment um, or hardware that is exported or imported never ever takes place via the, the naval base. It is always being done via the official customs ports, ports of entry being tabled by Kucha, Port Elizabeth, East London, Durban harbours. It never takes place via Simonstown. Now, he has given no explanation why the Lady R never intended and planned to go to a commercial port of entry. Uh, the only assumption that one can make is that whatever they wish that was to be offloaded and to be loaded onto the vessel would not make um, the criteria and meet with the criteria of the official customs agencies at the official customs ports of entry. He has given no explanation for that. And, um, you know, so so the panel the report itself, there's no reason why it shouldn't be made available. There's nothing classified. And even if there are classified information okay. and, and confidential information, there are means to deal with confidential and classified information. We deal with that all the time. Well, Kabuz, uh, about 50 people, according to reports, were supposed to give the information, including yourself. And um, we later got to her, here rather, that um, at some point um, you didn't have the evidence to prove or you actually didn't have adequate knowledge as that's what happened with what was being uploaded into the ship. So was there something that went wrong with the investigation or there was an issue with communication or the scope of the investigation or information available um, at, that par at that particular time? It depends, obviously, on who the 50 was. Uh, it was not, I was not part of that. I was approached at the proverbial number 99 of the report's work. Um, I have asked them whether, um, you know, they can tell me what their objective is, what their terms of reference is, what their instructions was, so that I know what information I should give them and can give them. Uh, they've reported negatively on that. I've also asked them whether I will be able to at least look or scrutinize the only the portion of the draft report that contained that would contain my information and testimony uh, and the report that they came back negatively on that as well so eventually uh, and that was already on the 17th the 18th of the month um, and then i was uh, my legal advice said you know don't don't give any credibility to a to a process that seems to be flawed so one must look and see who are the 50 that, that provided uh, information. And if it is um, naval-based staff, if it is arms corps staff, if it is Department of Defense staff, you know, what would you expect otherwise? I mean, they would never come out and, and testify against their employer. So, um, Kabuz, uh, uh, Kabuz, the information that we have got is quite to the contrary of that. Uh, okay, now, Kabuz, is the president's decision now not to release the full report? Is it justified? Because some people would have expected that we'll have all the details on ground for everyone to assess and um, scrutinize. So, is it justified for him to say he's just going to release a, a partial a part of the report? No, absolutely not. There's no justification for not re re uh, releasing the full report. And then when he says he will re release portions of the report, what is the cr criteria? And how do we know that he has met the criteria for releasing certain portions of the report? He at least, he at least should release the full report plus all the background information to the Joint Standing Committee on Defence. You know, we have dealt with a closed session meeting a week prior to the Lady R's arrival, and that meeting was in Simonstown. It was highly classified and highly sensitive information. So we were entrusted with that, with that information at that time, but now after six, seven, eight months, um, the president cannot even share a redacted version of this report with us. It all shows that, you know, um, he has already decided in advance that he will not release the information. Uh, which shows, which, which showed us at that stage 
that he already had information that know that it can be damning um, and he will do whatever not to to release the report so uh, so yes there's no reason why he cannot release it because even the weapons that he in, that he claims is sensitive it's already in public domain it's been reported in public document in a public meeting so there's nothing that is confidential and even if there are you know there are various ways that we can deal with that uh, so there's no reason why he cannot re re release the information and the report well, we hope that in the coming days more details will be made available so that this can be put to bed. Thank you so much, Abkobus, for talking to us. Thank you.